Okay, uh, recording has started. Um, I didn't catch it. Do you want to uh, share from your side, Loa, or you want no, to? I, I think it's better that you were on the meeting as usual. So. Okay, all right. Uh, let me share the agenda that uh, was composed uh, over this week. Um, give me a moment. <clears throat> Are you able to see uh, the agenda? Anybody can confirm? Yes, we can see it. Great, thank you so much for confirming. Okay. So, uh, as usual, we have uh, okay. Uh, we have our start page, uh, and then we have the uh, design team page. Uh, we are keeping the week by week agenda and notes as well as the recording. Uh, so you know how to find them. Um, there was a glitch with uh, WebEx invite. I'm hoping that uh, it was resolved. Um, I know that the Mac and Tor uh, were working on it. I don't know if any one of them is on the call. I haven't seen, so they can comment. Uh, if was, people the, was this current starting time the new recurring one? Because I think it's an hour later, and I don't remember from last week whether we decided on that. Yeah, good question. I know there was a bit of confusion on the change of the start time. Um, Loa, I, I, do you have more to add? Uh, did we confirm uh, uh, the uh, sorry. change? Sorry, it was, it was a mistake by me. When I, when I told Mark to set up the meeting, I used the CEC instead of... Loa, can you get closer to the mic? You're very hard to understand. Ah, okay. I have a bad echo also. Yeah. So can you hear me now? Uh, hardly, yeah. Okay, let, let's uh, voice. Is, is this better? Much better now. Much better? Yes. Oh, okay. It's only the, the echo is there. No, the problem was that when I told Mike to set up the meeting, uh, I used uh, uh, 4 p.m. CET, which this is. Uh, and I should have used uh, 4 p.m. CEST, which w is an hour earlier. Um, oh, we are where we are this week. What's the plan for next week? Exactly. I was going to say exactly said, uh, uh, greatly said, uh, Stuart. So are we planning to change it back uh, or stick with it? I actually would like to change it back, but uh, it's not something uh, that I, I really need to do. Um, is, is most of the attendees okay with this time? I, I see great attendance today. Okay. We can leave it as a poll for after, uh, you know, if you want. Okay, yeah. Okay, if we leave it, then I'll update the uh, the wiki accordingly and uh, send that as email just to reconfirm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Carlos, uh, what Tarek said was that we leave it as a poll, so we send out a mail. Which one do you want to do? Okay, and then we and then we change if we have a majority to to do the change. But you need to wait a couple of days. Okay, sure. Okay, fine. Thanks. All right. Uh, so that uh, that was. Uh, on this, and then we have the agenda for today. Um, uh, the first will be a discussion that uh, Stewart will drive. He has published an interesting draft. I am uh, maybe midway through it. That's, uh, but so he will be presenting that uh, next. And then um, we have an action item from previous meeting to do some use case discussion. Uh, for what we're tackling in uh, these design meetings. 
Um, not sure if uh, we com converged on a presenter. And the last was a request from, uh, from Song um, to present his, uh, um, his already existing draft. Um, now, any anyone anyone wants to uh, bash this agenda or uh, update? Uh, it much? Tarek, you forgot me. Oh, I did. I? Uh, on two A. So you have it two oh. two A two A and two B. Okay, yeah, I didn't go through the second level. Yeah, you want to talk? Okay, do you want to give? So you're gonna lead two A? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. No problem. And they're gonna be be short, like five minutes. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, and are we okay with the agenda? Anybody wants to add items uh, to the to the today's discussion, uh, to today's meeting? No. Okay, looks good. Uh, so we go ahead uh, to two uh, A, I guess. Uh, before doing that. Uh, we have a pointer to slides here. Uh, are these the latest slides? Did I hear you correct, Stewart? Say that you will be updating them. No, wait. Th those are my slides. Those are his slides. Yes. Yeah, we haven't up uploaded Stuart's slides yet, so Stuart has to share them from his from okay. his laptop. But okay. I want to start with the um, auxiliary uh, slides. Okay, and uh, you want me to open those, or you want to go ahead? No, and you, share? you can open. You can open them. Let me see if I can do that easily. Uh, hmm. Okay. Oh, not to me. I see in one slide. Uh, it's only one. Are you able to see a PowerPoint slide from me or not? No. No? Okay, then let me, I think I, I need to share another application then. Oh, there they are. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I, started to think about what uh, the relationship between uh, indicators that is something in the stack that tells you that you have something after the stack that you need to take care of uh, and uh, i started to think about well, what do we really want so if you look at the second from the left i think this is uh, where we actually started, we have one indicator in the stack, and then we have uh, data after the boss that we need to take care of. Uh, the first one is, if I understand, it's a possibility uh, with the uh, curated bits. So you can have something in the stack that actually is self-contained, and you don't need anything after the stack. Uh, the third one is, I guess, where uh, Greg were going with his slide. Excuse me, um, yeah. that's not quite true, Lower. Some of Kiriti's indicators were self-contained. Don't do um, uh, fast reroute, for example, but I don't think all of the indicators that's were self-contained, were uh, they? That's, that's not what I said. No, no, that, that, uh, what Stewart said is... Uh, it both are accurate. I mean, there are cases where everything would be contained within the stack. And he had, I, I thought Kiriti was on the call, so he would interject, but there were cases where uh, he had something that would come uh, or an indicator to, to process something after the bottom of stack. Wait a minute. Can I get back and get, try to get it correctly? The first one is a possibility with the Kiriti bits where you don't have anything after the stack. If you have something, yeah, that's also that's also the case with the Stein approach as well. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then you have the second one. It could be curated bits or something else. 
You have right. something in the stack that tells you you have something after the boss that you need to take That's care right. of. That's right. So it's an indicator that some you need to process something after the stack. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the third one is uh, what I think uh, Greg and Adrian was going with that draft. Uh, if uh, the indicator drops too low in the in the stack, you can repeat it earlier in the stack and then find what you need to find after the stack. But those two indicators are basically the same. And then there is something. You don't else. have to be right. The, the, uh, at least uh, well, that's yeah. where he's going. That's where he's going next, isn't it, Tarek? Oh. Look, to, look to the right. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. sorry, I didn't look. Okay, so, yeah. so the fourth one is something I want to wa want to discuss if it's possible, and that is that you have two different indicators uh, in the stack, and you have two different sets of uh, data after the stack that you need to take care of. Before uh, you before you go there, can I just for number three reconfirm that we have. Uh, evidence or that somebody chimed in and said there's evidence of of this insofar as that um th th they're not numbered right so but i guess the point would be that the lower indicator would be too far in the stack to to search it or, or, or more, not necessarily too far but i think it's more expensive so i think right. that um the what we were being told last week was that sometimes you, you you may be able to get to the bottom of stack you may be able to look at everything but it might be expensive um you take a cash hit or something or other okay and so in some cases you, you, it's helpful to have a, a an indication early on whether or not you need to go and search the stack sorry it's not search the stack or anymore it's um uh read the stack isn't it greg greg tells right. me but but my 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 question I wanted to ask is, do we have an indication, you know, or or, or a degree of of the problem if we already need to search for bottom of stack, right? Because we are searching for bottom of stack, so uh, you know, is the you know additional searching for the deeper indicator an additional pain? No, you don't uh, normally so... search. No, no, this is about not searching unless you have to. Mm. Yes, that's why they've done it. No, no, but wait a second. So in this particular case, in number three, the assertion is that uh, we will need to look for the ancillary data anyhow. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, but it could be quite expensive to look for it. Right, but what I'm saying is if you need to search for the ancillary, you're, you're right in so far as that uh, we don't uh, know uh, off the top of our head whether we need uh, to look for an indicator, right? The, but if we're saying, well, you know, uh, we need to look a, for it and we need to look for the bottom of stack anyhow, no, there's right? There's an example, Miss Lower has not provided the right example. Sorry, Lower. Mm, uh, okay. If you had put the indicator in column two as M, label M, then it would have better illustrated the issue. No, no, I understand the issue. What I'm saying is, do we have an indication? Okay, so there, there are two issues, right? Seeking in general, and we're going to get to that, right? So, yeah. but I'm saying, if if you already are seeking at least to bottom of stack, right? If you're not going to get rid of 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 seeking to searching for bottom of stack, no, they don't always find... search. They don't always search for the no, bottom. No, but of I'm stack, saying right? under the assumption that you are going to search for bottom of stack. If 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 you already need to search for bottom of stack, is it additional overhead? No, no, no. Can, 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 I, can I can I go back and explain something? Right. Yes. It used to be that the stacks were small, and we used to always search them. Right. Then segment routing came along, and the stacks got enormous, and so people uh, tried to. Well, some pe people found it very expensive to go to the bottom of stack and do the five tuple, but they were saved by the fact that by this stage we'd already invented entropy labels. So in segment routing, in ordinary segment routing, there is no need to search for anything other than the entropy label. And the what the entropy label um, people did was to put one earlier in the stack so that you didn't have to do the cache miss. Right, but okay. So the whole point is. As soon as you find the indicator, however deep it is, yes, it seems then that you, you still need to search for the bottom of stack. And so the question is, 
when you need to search for the bottom of stack anyhow, isn't, you know, the cost equal in the end? No, because you might not have had to search for the bottom of no, stack. No, no, I'm saying that in... No, 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 no Lower's miss, Lower missing another one. If Lower had made uh, the first one have no orange in it, then you would never have had to do anything other than look at the top label. True, right? But the the question is, I, I, is, I understand is... your question, Torles. Uh, I think uh, the issue is, um, I mean, maybe I should ask the question. Do you, do you think parsing has the same price as looking for the end of stack? So parsing all the labels or the meaning of the labels. Well, at least finding indicator versus finding bottom of stack. Yeah. So that comparison. Finding, finding, yeah. finding bottom of stack is more expensive if you take a ca cash hit. If you take a, a cash but, miss. But if I if I have the stack, the full stack, yes. don't I need to parse it to find the right uh, you know indicator and flags and so on. Well, in in column three, the indicators are the same. And you know though. that the point is that this one is closer to the top, so parsing it will be less expensive. That's what I'm trying to answer. Yes. 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 Yeah, yes. That, that yes. is that yes. is clear. But all I'm saying is I'm looking at the total cost, right? And if, well, if there I, is no there is no total cost if that indicator is not no, there. Understood. But I'm right. saying that um, it if we need to have an indicator, right? Then you're right. If having the indicator earlier on is a, a way to ensure that we wouldn't need to search that deep in stacks that don't have indicators. But all I'm right. saying is yeah. that when we do have or, or indicators we don't care about. Right. But if if we have indicators um, in the stack, then isn't the uh, overwhelming cost here to 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 search for bottom of stack. Uh, that's the most expensive piece of the operation. Yes, right. That's what I'm right, thinking. But I'm, reasons, I'm, okay, so I did send, uh, I think, last week or so, uh, a couple of more detailed question in that respect for Loa's uh, draft. I'm not sure if he has uh, found the time to incorporate them and uh, so that's that's exactly you know these relative costs that would be better would be very good to understand and and see that for example what you said Stuart, searching for the bottom of stack is the most expensive operation that uh, whether we for example can come to agreement on i that. i'm i'm hearing different from uh, you know unless i am misreading ignas um he's basically citing to the what i said that parsing is expensive uh, more expensive than finding the bottom of stack. Uh, do you think that okay. is, uh, we can take an action item and... So, so uh, what you said with your questionnaire, I, I, I in terms of de detailing uh, the, the questions on these? No, so, he's right. Ignis is right, because to find an indicator, I have to check the value of the thing, whereas uh, to find bottom of stack, I only have to find a one bit. Although I do have to do a uh, an or uh, an and operation on each of the, uh, the stacks to do it, it seems well, like I the same it, type of match that's operation. The same thing for a parser. It doesn't uh, matter if you look a particular value to pass a word or look a particular bit. Well, I mean, uh, what I mean here is that uh, if you think mm -hmm. that searching the bottom stack is expensive, then you can, uh, you know, in the indicator you can add extra information to tell you where you find can find the bottom stack or the data after the bottom stack. And that's, ex and that's exactly what we're about to talk about, how you. Yeah. Uh, colleagues, uh, basically I comment that is far more of the uh, implementation aspect. So it depends if you do horizontal or vertical processing. If that's horizontal in, in one register and you fit all of your labels, uh, checking for the bottom of stack bit is not expensive. Uh, if you are doing vertical processing, it is expensive. That means you need, uh, in general, one memory access per one label. And that is really expensive. Well, so, well, I think, like, Ignis, what you're assuming is that you've got a special register that's recording all the bits, and then you've got a, um, uh, um, a, a, a comparator that's sort of built into hardware. Is that right? I'm talking about generic compute platforms, any x86 platform, uh, 
which is available over the last 10 years has 256 bit registers. You just need to use that and your data needs to be friendly for those registers. Uh, the cost of accessing 32-bit label or 128-bit label is the same if they are friendly to those registers. Well, what you're just saying is that if you can um, process a certain limited label stack with all the labels in parallel because they're, let's say, 128 or 256, then um, I would also contend that the search for an indicator would be the same as the search for a boss within that parallel. No, it's not quite the same, Torlus, because an indicator could take one of a number of values. Exactly. And it depends whether you do that horizontally or vertically. So, so in case of uh, P4 programming, that's the exact same uh, when you program the parser. It doesn't matter if you're looking for a word or a bit. Well, I guess the parser isn't necessarily what the actual underlying code is doing in terms of parallelization. Uh, no, hang, hang on a second, how you, how you wasn't it? Um, finding one particular value of, of a number of bits is fine, but indicators may be a range of values depending on how we do, how we do it. Whereas bottom of stack is always just one bit. Yes, but uh, in terms of the parser, it's just more branches in the parsing graph. But still, not if you do it. Not if you do it. Not need one cycle not, to not if you one, do, one label. Um, I don't think you're right, actually. Um, but maybe this is getting us bogged down into the detail. Exactly. Well, you don't need to branch for parsing that, but those are implementation yeah. details. Yes. No, I, th I, th I, um, I, th I think I take that. Um, from 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 Ignis. Um, so 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 Loa, I th I think it would be good if we can basically try to capture these things in in your questionnaire document, right? Okay, yeah, I will try to do that. The, the thing I wanted to illustrate is a little bit less uh, detailed than what you're discussing now. Uh, what I'm saying is that in the third uh, Third case, there is a rule. You can only have one indicator, even if you repeat it. So when you find the first, you can go and look for the bottom of stack. Yep. In the fourth, there are there we allow two different indicators in the stack. So if you find mm -hmm. one, you need to search the rest of the stack to find another. And um, then you have in the fifth a mix of, of, of the two. Uh, on the fourth one, Loa, I thought you once you find the first. You process it and you're done, right? I mean, you. Well, that's the question. That's that's oh. the question I'm asking. If I if I have two different indicators, telling you to do different things. If I find the first one, can can I skip the second? Well, it depends. Um, it depends what you're trying to say, right? Um, and and I think you know I I, I get into a lot more detail later on, right? But I think. Um, supposing one is uh, saying, um, or for example, no fast reroute, and another one is saying latency-based per forwarding parameters, you probably need both of them, don't you? Yep. That's what I think. So I think that number four is exactly the example that basically can be used for the argument we had on number three, right? Which is that searching for multiple indicators, the reason why searching for indicators may be most likely be more difficult uh, or expensive than searching for bottom of stack. Uh, but you don't know which indicator applies to which label set. That's the problem. Well, I, I'm, re I'm really asking the question, which rule do we have? Do we allow different indicators in the stack? Uh, no, but I mean, yeah. just obviously, if we just try to introduce something new, blue is new, and orange is, uh, for example, the uh, entropy, then the answer would be, if we want to be backward compatible, then the answer is yes. We would need to search for multiple. So, okay. Okay, so but... I look at it differently, Loa and Torless. I look at it as the blue is applicable to any node, uh, you know, until you reach the top label, uh, you, you know, and yeah. and the uh, and the orange is applicable to this uh, segment behind it, right? This label L. But that wouldn't be the uh, logic if uh, orange would be entropy, SPL. 
No, so, I'm, I'm not saying entropy. I'm saying actions, uh, genetic so, action. So, so whatever think... actions are in the blue, whatever actions are in the blue are applicable to this effect. Uh, uh, Actually, I don't think you can say that, but I, I think the only reason you can't say that is because we haven't defined it yet. Okay, okay, I see. So, yeah, I, well, that's my vision, my, uh, but it might not be that uh, we, uh, we converge on that, but I'm saying from, from my perspective. But, I mean, how would you do it if you wanted to have uh, something new plus uh, the entropy? So, the entropy will be, you know, if it is sitting at the bottom, then it's applicable to all the labels above it. But that isn't how it's specified. It can sit it anywhere. Is. I mean, I, I mean, people have put the ELI EL uh, closer to the VPN label, uh, so that you know it doesn't care about the transport label if you have multiple. Or no, no, that's fine. But you know, uh, let's say put it after N, and then O would be uh, the VPN label, right? You still would need to seek for it. I, I uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, if you want the entropy to be applicable end to end LSP end to end, you better maintain the entropy all the way till to you reach the end, uh, the end point. Yeah, so, right. I, but that's what I'm saying after end. So even so, if it's after end. So, so, so what's your real point here to us? I'm I'm confused. What are you trying to get to? I, I was trying to get to the point that. Uh, if we want to seek for multiple, I think we agree that it most likely is more expensive than seek for an individual. What is the reason why we would need to seek for multiple? I think for anything we do in the future, we can figure out we may want to avoid it. The question is, what about backward compatibility like SPL? Well, backward compatibility probably can't do this. My opinion is that uh, you you guys uh, keep saying that uh, parsing the entire label stack is expensive, but I said it's not that case. Um, I, I don't think uh, parsing the label stack is expensive, but uh, processing the um, data after it is more, actually much more expensive. If you look at how the parser is implemented, it's a it's always pipeline. You have a parsing graph. You just uh, read the uh, each field a uh, header by header or uh, here is label by label you might uh, if you have a deep label stack you might uh, slightly increase a uh, total parsing latency but that won't affect the parsing throughput you will still uh, basically have one uh, one cycle per packet uh, throughput so um, so my 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 point is uh, here it can't the, be one it can't be one it cannot be one cycle per packet. I don't know where you get that from. It can't be one cycle per there packet. There is typically a limit to, to the depth of a pipeline now, you. Yeah. Uh, that, that depends on parser, how deep you can pass, uh, how you physically design that parser. If you can feed, say, uh, hundreds of bytes to the parser, that means it can look at hundreds of bytes. Not, in, no not, 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 not if any of them depend on any of the others. Excuse me? Not if any depend on any of the others. You can't do it in one cycle. I mean, maybe you can do it in one pipeline sort of phase, but you certainly can't do it in one cycle. One cycle throughput, not one cycle per, uh, latency. I mean, you can, depends on the depth of the label stack, you have a longer latency. But uh, since you have a pipeline, then you, you can do that in per, Basically, per cycle, you will finish passing one package. Oh, but the question is, how many pipeline steps can you afford? Yeah. That's a depend uh, uh, difference of uh, chip by chip. Right? Some, um, for example, um, the 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 uh, uh, barefoot chip claim is a. I, I remember it, it's more than five hundred byte. You can. Yeah, but it's not the number of bytes. Yeah. But and then, most of uh, if most you do if you other... if you do a sequential decision. Right, it basically needs. Chips, I, uh -huh. I, I see uh, in the market claim around 200 uh, bytes. Yeah, but that's just uh, the, 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 the look ahead buffer. That doesn't say anything about the number of sequential steps you can take. They Remember, that you can parse that depth. Yes, exactly. But that does that isn't related to, 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 to the number of sequential steps in your uh, parsing definition. If you have basically parsing chain of, you know, effectively five headers after each other, that's basically means you have a pipeline depth of five. 
it has nothing to do with no, whether you no, can look into 256 only, or 512 bytes. That's only yes. the author. They said they can pass that, that, uh, the price so, in that depth. So what are we trying to resolve here? Uh, no, I, I think we're trying to resolve uh, some type of requirement. So is the so I think the requirement has to be, um, can I have multiple elements of auxiliary data, and if I do, how do I know which ones apply to me? Is that the requirement? Uh, I think so, but I'm not um, sure. I I can't edit the uh, the slide, but uh, okay. um, um, but but there is a there is a case where, um, you know, the indicator has uh, data. And, and you know inside and it, it doesn't need any anything after the bottom of stack that's correct sure. there are two approaches to do that yes right so and in that case you know it goes back to the column number four i can have a blue and an orange where the where the actions inside the blue are different than the orange and i really could care less about the i i don't have any, any auxiliary or uh, ancillary data data after so yeah. right <laughs> That's that, is, that, is, that is correct, but I'm questioning whether you can have the sophisticated sort of information yeah. you need in 32 bits, less than 32 correct. bits. Uh, actually, we, I mean, in, in Kiriti's draft, he said that uh, I can have an indicator which is 32 bits and, uh, and, and, and it's, uh, you know, I can follow it up with another label. So it's an extended type of thing. So either two indicators so, so that. So there's an interesting thing about Kariti's draft, which is that he doesn't really comment on what the S bit is. And if the S bit is anything other than zero, then you cannot pass any further in the stack. I need to, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that he did not touch the S bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. S -bit. He left it as is. But, uh, but can... Yakov did. Yakov did. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, but, but my point is, uh, I mean, there are cases where column one with multiple indicators in it, uh, multiple indicators, oh. in, right? It's uh, It doesn't have any uh, ancillary data after the bottom stack. And it's true what Stewart said, you can do the elaborate, you know, time stamping inside the label stack and, you know. It may, so, maybe... so, Tarek, could you have one combination between uh one and four i i i think you're way 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 down in the weeds before you know you need to understand what you're trying to achieve and then we'll know which ones of these make sense yeah yeah that that uh, that's why i tried to write, write it down but uh yeah i mean very obvious use case that we already have a you know couple of drafts on an mpls working group is carrying the slice identifier uh, which is uh, you know varying maybe 16 bits or or so, uh, um, and and that's supposed to be contained inside the label stack. So I don't need a pointer to go and fetch it after the bottom of stack. Uh, that's one. Maybe carrying a path identifier, uh, uh, you know, for an SR path could be another one. Um, and there were some flags, as was mentioned, oh, yes. FRR flag, and uh, I mean, oh. yeah. Yes, that's it. So, uh, I, I'm trying to to put the question in some way. Uh, what is allowed? So, if now, we... hang on a second, what you mean? What is allowed in the current architecture, or what is allowed after we finish playing with it? Uh, after we finish playing with it. Right. Well, I think that's a we need to, we need to understand the use cases to know which one of the mechanisms uh, satisfies the most use cases. Um, uh, maybe true, but uh, we have uh, text and comments that actually indicates uh, that uh, we we are looking some something like uh, the fourth cases. Fourth case, more than more than one indicator and more than one group of. Uh, I think that's right. I mean, yeah. for example, a good example where we definitely need data afterwards is IOEM. Sure, and actually, uh, to lab to the fourth case, you could add an indicator that uh, have everything self-contained. 
So you have three different indicators, two uh, sets of data plus one that don't carry any extra data. But it would be nicer, in my view, if we had a single mechanism that did everything. Uh, yes. If we can do that. No, but what, what I'm saying is that if you go for, for number three, we say that there is only one indicator in the stack and one set of auxiliary data, uh, though the indicator could be repeated. Uh, you know, but that, that's what, what number three is. Hmm. Number four is, well, you can have two different indicators and two different sets of auxiliary data. Okay. And then uh, I think that um, Tarek says that, okay, we can have number four, but we can also have indicators that don't have any auxiliary data. And I was, I was saying this, I'm, I'm just going to, on the fly, I'm modifying your slide, sorry. Huh? For the, no, well, co copy it to another page and do the changes there. Sure, no problem. Uh, what I'm saying is two cases are missing here. And, and, and you know, and these are the two cases. One, one is the, uh, the one on the left here where you repeat the indicator and you don't have anything after the VUS. Uh, and this repetition is just so that, uh, you know, uh, uh, you help the hardware find the indicator and the actions uh, closer to the top. Here, it's actually, they are different. So, so the actions in the orange are different than the actions in the blue. I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't fight that. I think you're right. I, I, I think there's uh, yes, uh, another case missing here. Uh, all these cases here implies that the indicator is associated with a label in front of it. Um, or, uh, and also it's in, for the later three cases, it also implies that one indicator is just associated with one ancillary data. So that's <laughs> another case is that we just need one indicator to indicate whatever number of uh, uh, accelerated data so, so associated with any label. Can I suggest that we're doing this the wrong way, right? We should start off understanding what information we want to carry in the stack itself, not the indicators or anything, but what technical information we want to carry in the stack other than um, pointers to FIB entries. And we should understand what data we want to carry after the stack. Then we need to understand the scenarios, and then we need to understand what indicator methods we would need in each of those cases. I, I agree, Stuart, and I, I caution on two things. There is mutable data and immutable data. So, right. like, for example, the data that uh, we talk about IOEM, you know, the timestamp and everything that, that after the bottom stack is going to change on every hop, possibly. Uh, but if I'm carrying an ID, a slice ID, I, it won't change. So, uh, yeah, we can keep our, uh, those two things uh, in mind. Uh, I suppose you're probably right, but I was just thinking you might yeah. do slice swapping yeah. when you move domains. But, yeah, I mean, if, if, uh, most I of the cases, uh, yeah. I mean, we want to make it. The, I'm thinking of the pseudo wire equivalent, the multi segment pseudo wire equivalent for slices. Sure. sure. But, but, but I, for know, some I hadn't stuff, thought of I... it until you made the point, but. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think we need to understand what we're trying to do. And then we need to decide what methods we're going to use, what, what data we need to put where. And then we need to decide how we're going to inform the forwarder that that data is there. OK. Does, is, that, is that a way forward? I think, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh... <coughs> So, can I have some help to actually, we probably should try to put that down as a text first before we go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And then we agree on that, then we can 
start looking at how we map it into the stack and uh, mm. data after mm -hmm. the stack. Um, okay, I think we we're done with this picture. It can probably served one purpose, and uh, we have a couple of questions. So okay, I, I will try to capture that and then. Okay, write, write I, some some text. I'm willing to volunteer, but if more volunteers can come up, uh, you know, I want to give chance for other people to contribute. Uh, but I'll I'll try to help as well. Uh, well, I th I, th Laura, what's 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 your plan with the question document? Right, that's where I thought contribution would start first because it's more general as opposed to, you know, trying to come up with the solution pieces. This is looking more like exploring uh, the whole solution piece, and that might become very large if we can't limit it upfront by by the answers to okay. the questions. Well, Turles, to be honest, this was my attempt to get some grip about on what people actually are talking about. Okay. Because we've been talking about, I think, all the cases I had, plus the two or three cases that Tarek had and what Stuart had. Uh, and we've been talking about it in a mix, and I couldn't really understand what was going on. So I tried to capture that and see what the differences were. It's nothing more than that. So you're right. It should go into the question document once I understand what goes in there. Well, I, all I'm saying is that I think there is a lot more work in trying to document all the possible combinations, but that may be to a good extent wasted effort if we already find agreements that certain things are too expensive. I think that's the risk. Well, yes, but you can't really agree on that they're too expensive before you look at it. Uh, I think it's a good uh, good homework we can do, and um, I, I, at least I find it useful, Torlas. Um, do you agree that uh, we will take an action item on that? Well, all I'm saying is that, you know, listing all the different options without, you know, discussing the metrics on them in terms uh, of whether we think it's good or, or, or worse, I right? Don't think I don't the options, uh, Torres. I, what I heard Stewart say is what data you want to carry inside the label stack and what data you would like to see after the label, uh, after the bottom of stack. So starting from what is it that you want to carry inside and what is it you want to carry out? Oh, on, on, what is, on which segments is it applicable to? So I think that you have to know what you want to carry in, right. in the stack. You need to know what you're going to carry after the stack and you right. need to know what segments do any of those pieces right. apply to. I agree. I agree. So it, it's just asking ourselves is what is it that uh, not not what options do we have rather? Okay, I have enough information to go on and work on this. So I will I will speak the help that I I will actually be sending it to uh, to the mailing list and people can chime in and help out if as you can. Okay. Um I do want to give a chance to Stuart. Uh is it the right time? Are we done with this, Loa? With this step, okay. uh, we're not we're not done, but I have enough to go ahead. Okay, you need to more time. You mean is that are you asking? Not that? not here. Oh. I don't need. I need more time to work on it. But uh, I will mean, do that offline. Okay, um, uh, I'll pass the ball then to Stewart to talk about the uh, uh, the uh, pointer data pointer in. Okay, so um, hopefully I am sharing the right screen, am I? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So, uh, so um, what this is about is noting 
um, that um, with Kariti's spare bits, we can construct, uh, we can use them as pointers and uh, looking at some of the consequences of that. Uh, how do I get to the next one? I go to here, I go to here. Oh. Right. So background and motivation. So there are certain cases that benefit from our ancillary data, uh, and I'll explain later on why I use the why I've been using the term ancillary uh, uh, data, which um, needs to be processed or accessed as part of the forwarding decision. So our problem is to decide how to add that information to an MPLS packet that it, in a way that is suitable for efficient high speed forwarding, uh, easy for more the more modern hardware to add this feature but backwards compatible in terms of at least the basic forwarding operations with legacy hardware. So uh, the approaches we've had so far have been really around um, putting indicators in the, um, um, in the stack um, to, um, so right, the approach we've had so far rely on the forwarder finding out if there's any applicable ancillary data below the bottom of stack and deciding which of the ancillary data applies to this hop. So it's not clear sometimes in some of the things we've discussed in various places how I know whether this particular piece of below the bottom of stack information applies to me at this hop. Some of the methods make it easier to deduce this, but some of them don't. None of them, uh, I think, deal particularly well with ancillary data that is, that is at different hops. So um, if you um, have three bits, two bits of ancillary data and one applies at hop one and three and the other at hop uh, two only, for example, then it's some of these methods are, require more sort of um, implicit deduction than explicit um, instruction. Um, so um, let's go to the next slide. So here's what we thought. All right. So if we can use the so-called spare bits in the non-top top of stack um, label as a pointer to auxiliary data uh, applicable at this hop. So the semantic is process as described by label one, top of stack, using the information pointed to by label two. And note that you can point to anywhere inside that. If, if we've got enough bits, we'll be able to point to anywhere inside that ancillary uh, data. Um, if there is not a pointer label at label two, then you just uh, forward um, exactly as you would before. Equally well, you forward exactly as you would before if you don't understand the pointer mechanism. So a legacy router would look at top of stack and continue um, using that fact, none the wiser about what else it was um, it was finding. But a a, um, a a a router that understood this would say, "Are oh, there's a pointer?" or "No, there isn't a pointer." So I just carry on uh, as if there were um, uh, with what I what the top of stack tells me to do. So what are the advantages? Well, the ability to find the data without reading the whole of the stack. So you you know straight away where you're going to. It's just a um, an offset inside your uh, parsing operation. Um, we already had extensive discussions about the expense of parsing. Uh, the ability to specify which ancillary data is applicable to this particular forwarding label. Uh, there are no deductions or um, uh, I'm not sure what the other word was supposed to be. There, there are no deductions inside the um, the parser are needed. So, for example, if you look at the way an extension header mechanism is worked, is, is worked, you kind of have to deduce which bits of it apply um, to you. And I think it's quite a general and extensible um, technique. Well, where's my pointer gone? Right. So, so yes. Stuart, a question. If yes. you go back to the slide where you have the pointer in the stack. Yep. That one. Can you have yep. more than one pointer? We'll get there. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, I, I, I do eventually get there, right? Um, so, uh, it's a sort of a didactic explanation in the sense that this is how we thought of it and then how we sort of added to it. So, uh, the, the um, we've done that one. So, my assumption for this point in the in the discussion is that the, the pointer will be some function of a special purpose label. All right. Uh, we could uh, make the top two labels a, a tuple, 
that is sort of the way that Yakov's um, appro approach was, where you see the first label, you know that the second one is some piece of metadata, or, or in our case, appointed to a metadata, but it has some, some problems. We need to change the feck of the top stack to do that. We no longer have full legacy compatibility, at least on the top label. And we need more labels in the global label table because we will need labels uh, for effect with and without the pointer mechanism to follow. And the problem with that is not only is, it co is the increasing cost of distribution of the labels and the management, but I'm particularly concerned that some LSRs, particularly PE LSRs, are already saturating the global label table. That was an issue we, fa we found in um, pseudowires where people were saying, actually, you know, we need more than we can get in the million um, uh, in, in, in the label space we've got available. So we do we do look at an alternative, rather controversial uh, approach later in the draft. So this is what I had in mind in terms of a pointer LSE. All right. So we have a label that's the trigger label. That's probably you know that's possibly an SPL uh, a naught to sixteen, uh, but it's the trigger is the important thing. The pointer. I, I, I sequestered the uh, the TTL. Or I'm proposing we sequester the TTL. The flags, um, I have one use for a flag, which was whether I was going to point in in units of um, uh, an octet or point in units of, um, well, I said 16 bits, but I'm not sure whether that shouldn't be 32 bits. The problem with pointing in anything other than octets is that you need to put padding in the, um, in the, um, uh, auxiliary data, but that's all in the noise compared to the you know the concept. We, the concept is that I point to what I want to do rather than infer where it is, uh, which instance of it is, and um, uh, what I'm supposed to do with it. So uh, the, the the first thing to do is to note that you can have, of course, multiple pointers pointing to the same element of of, of, of um, ancillary data. So this would be how you might construct a um, um, a segment rooted um, system. But don't don't worry, we 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 we've got some more stuff later on, right? This is how you do a segment rooted system. So they come in tuples really, and you would have to pop the top of stack and the pointer. Um, uh, but each of the pointers points to the same piece of ancillary data. So we can see the, the pop operation where we had to take two off the top of the stack. So that'd be more efficient, and this is kind of the thing that gets into, into the all the areas um, where um, we were having trouble in, in, the, in, in the discussion with Loa. If um, you... Uh, can have a single pointer that refer that is used by multiple labels. So the sort of mechanism that I was looking at here is that um, I have a and I need a better word for it that we have a different sort of swap operator within the stack. So what I would do, if you'll notice here, is I'm going to pop uh, label one. Um, that leaves label two at the top of stack, which it can't be. Um, so I really need to swap label three and label two, in, uh, and this allows a method of encoding um, a pointer that's common to a number of um, um, uh, top of stack labels um, in the in the in the label stack without um, burning up double the number of labels in the stack to encode it, which is the obvious and simple way to do it for segment routing. So it's more efficient in uh, stack space. It's a slightly more complex um, uh, pop operator, and uh, we do need to. We would need to do a correction to the pointer. Although Torlus was put, was suggesting that if the pointer was relative to bottom of stack, um, we but but that requires us to find the bottom of stack. But if it were relative to the bottom of stack, that might be a different um, um, approach that doesn't need the correction. But that means we have to find bottom of stack ourselves. So the problem we need we have with this is how do we stop propagating the pointer? Um, so we could have a sort of a TTL in the pointer says how many times you're going to do this propagation. We could have a bit in uh, the top of stack label, perhaps. We could have a different effect for the top of stable lack, which I don't like doing. Or we could have a another label in the stack that says um, when you get here, pop the pointer as well. 
So there's a number of this is work in progress, very much work in progress. But I wanted to get to people to understand um, that uh, pointers have all kinds of interesting properties. So um, we can have multiple pointers, clearly. Uh, I think you, this was your question, wasn't it, uh, Lower. So we might put a point, for example, latency-based forwarding information and IOEM. Um, IOEM and LBF are probably too big to go in the stack itself, I think. Um, and you would treat those as a, as a group for all of those operators that I was talking about before. So you would pop, toss um, uh, point one and point two as a group, or you might do a group swap where you move, where, where label four came to the top of stack and uh, label two and three slid down one when you popped label one. I, I think people probably understand the the issue. Okay, and of course, um, one of the things about this is that in some cases you might want to use um, a piece of ancillary data on more than one hop uh, and in other cases you might want to use different pieces of ancillary data and um, this allows you to have whatever mix and match you want now before people say oh well, this is way too complicated etc the mark of a good design is that anything you ask it to do it can just do and um, I, I doubt that we would have this sort of complexity very often, but if we wanted to have it, if we needed to have a real application for it, then we could uh, incorporate it. So a few details. Um, one of the things that we need to, to talk about, which we haven't talked about today at all, is disposition. Um, ancillary data needs to be removed before the payload is passed out of the domain. And this can be a lot more complicated than just throw away some number of bytes. For example, um, we might need to specially dispose of the IOM data in a particular way, or we may um, need to um, um, do some special disposition function on the packet itself. For example, if what, if what we had was a pseudo wire, we may have to rebuild the, the, the real payload. So some of the methods that we've talked about over the time are um, having a FEC at the bottom of stack, uh, which is how we do it in pseudo wire and MPLS VPN. Uh, we could have a special purpose label at the bottom of stack. That's something else that we've talked about. Or um, we could use a pointer at the bottom of stack to point to some auxiliary data that describes the disposition. And I think that is also quite a powerful um, approach. That tells you uh, what you would need to uh, just discard, what you would need to analyze, what you would need to pass to um, another entity, for example, the IOM handler, and what you would need to do to reconstruct the packet, for instance. So it's a very powerful approach to have a disposition and set of ancillary data pointed to by, the, uh, by a label at the bottom of stack. So what about this? This is my sort of controversy sort of point, right? So SPLs are in very short supply. We'd rather not use an ESPL unless we had to. Um, so the question I'm asking is, can I use a regular label as a pointer label? So I'm not talking about global labels in the sense people have talked about global labels for years, right? I'm talking about a case where we have a small, tiny number of network not, um, wide agreed labels that are specially recognized by the forwarder. These labels will not go to the FIB. They will be handled like a, uh, they should be handled like a regular SPL. So don't take them to the FIB, just treat them as a normal label that you're going to handle specially because you know about it. So what would we have to do to that? Well, we clearly we have to modify the forwarder, uh, but not sort of greatly compared to what we do at the moment. The big problem is that we'd have to modify the label manager because the label manager would have to um, not allocate these labels. Now, clearly we only have to allocate do this to some label managers because in some cases, the labels are not used in the router at all. Because this is this business we found in SR where um, different uh, global label bases were um, were different. So if the if the regular label used for this purpose is below the label base, that's just a forwarder action. If it is above it, then, we, then there is some work um, to exclude these from normal allocation. But I'm going to contend that although that's hard work in the sense it's work to be done it is not computationally hard or intellectually hard um, and um, 
uh, of course, we can use this with, you can use some combination of SPL and this technique. I don't know whether this would fly, but it's worth thinking about because SPLs are short. And finally, why have I been calling this um, ancillary data? So I went, to, my standard place to go and look up terms is the Oxford English Dictionary. So I went and looked up metadata. And this is data whose purpose is to describe and give information about other data. That's not really what we're doing here. So uh, I then looked up auxiliary data, which is a helpful assistant affording aid, rendering assistance and giving support, etc. Well, that sounds better, but actually ancillary is the best one of all because this is designating activities and services that provide essential support to the functioning of a central service or industry. So I think ancillary data is the right term. I'm not going to die in a ditch about it, but um, that's where I got the term from. And that's the end. I have a question. Uh, first, thank you for the uh, very good presentation, Stuart. Uh, there is a slide. Uh, they're not numbered. I don't show. Uh, I don't see a number, so I can't. Uh, Sorry, I'll, I'll go back. Um, it was a multi-pointer slide. Um, that one? Yeah, that will do. And the, the idea is that you have uh, a uh, a pointer label, uh, mul multiple pointer labels uh, back to back. Yes. Oh, well, oh, you mean this one here? This one here, right? This is where I introduced the concept of multiple pointers. Right. So in this case here, I'm assuming that L1, L2, and L3 are a kind of a tuple. Right. That I'm going to do do the instruction pointed at by top, the top of stack L1, which maybe which is usually forward and get closer to somewhere, but uh, it, it, you know, it has all the MPLS semantics it could have, assisted by the information pointed at by pointer one, and also assisted by the information pointed at by pointer two, and mm. I make no the, the the architecture, if you like, the philosophy um, uh, has just gone has just gone from uh, you know zero one to n, um, and it's up to the packet designer and the application designer and the hardware designer to decide how many they can support. But the important point here is I can point to two different points in the no, ancillary the, data. This is fine. Um, I understand that. My question is. Um, you, you you're uh, can can we consider this as a, a one uh pointer label it, which is composite and uh, the reason i ask is because you know and again in kiriti's uh proposal we thought that we only need one spl label that says uh this label is a composite so it, it's a tuple again it's a tuple becomes yes, uh, yes. right so, Other than... so so supposing i mean i don't know what all the constructs you might want to make up but supposing um, you wanted to do um, IOAM on some parts of the, the path, um, but LBF on all parts of the path. So you want to do, you're, you're debugging an LBF problem. So you need pointer one everywhere, but in some cases you need pointer one and pointer two, because what pointer two is saying is, tell me, you know, what the, is recording the packets and parameters here, because I can't find out why this thing's not getting through in time. For example, so mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm sure that, you know, once we have this concept, we'll find all kinds of cool things to do with it. Hopefully some of them will make money for some of our customers. OK, all right. Thank you. Can I just add one, you know, big benefit that I think, you know, wasn't highlighted very much because I think we all started from putting together how well this helps avoiding the uh, scanning right but i think the other big thing that we hadn't gotten to in in the in the second track is how do we structure ancillary data you know when it is different blocks which may be uh, variable uh, size as right. you know as you know Taurus, i have some ideas on that no no that, but I, I just want to be, be, be mm, before yeah. going into any of those ideas i think the main point here for the pointer stuff is that putting the pointers into the stack allows us the biggest freedom in picking even any type of pre-existing, you know, ancillary data blocks, right? So, I mean, I could basically take uh, any existing IPv6 extension header and make it one of the ancillary oh, blocks. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And, we didn't, we didn't, we did. You're right. You're right, right. We didn't discuss that, did we, in this presentation, yeah. but you are absolutely correct that um, pointer two could be um, into an existing extension header in the payload itself. 
Yeah, it, it, I mean, whether or not we want to go beyond, let's say, uh, a, a big uh, blob of multiple components of ancillary data, specifically for MPLS or beyond, that's advanced, right? But even just the fact of, do we need to come up with a new structure to link multiple ancillary mm. blocks with each other? We don't need that layer of complexity here when we already have the pointers in the label stack, oh, right? Yeah, so it's yeah. a seeking and it's a simplification of no. just take any sequence of ancillary data blocks that may even come from different places, right? So, hey, I like this extension header that maybe IEEE did. Fine. It's an ancillary okay. data block I'm pointing to, right? So, I mean, there are these two big uh, blobs of, of benefits that this approach right. brings, right? One is uh, get rid of the scanning, which, you know, cannot be parallelized um, because it's, it's, it's a sequential pipelining operation. Um, and the other one is uh, the, you know, the, the use of any type of ancillary data that we like. Yeah, that's that, that's absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct. But, but let, let me give you a potential uh, disadvantage of using a pointer here. Um, because uh, the data uh, could be could change its size during the transmission. And also, there could be cycle. new adders to be whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, we, we, we whoa how, you, how does it change its size without stripping the entire stack off and rebuilding it? I O A M, uh, for example. Uh, oh well, presumably you would point you would point to the I O A M block, but the I O A M block is not going to expand. Yeah, but you have a pointer too. If the I O M block is the first block, pointer two point to the second block because the first block changes size. It does not. The second ha, ha, block will me. change its location. Excuse me, how you how you you cannot change the size of the ancillary data without rebuilding the entire stack. All you can do is to change. Why? Why? If if I just keep the, you know, I don't keep the pointer to each block. I just tell you where the uh, bottom stack is. Then I just use a, uh, you know, chain the, all the block together. Then I, ch if I change the size of one block, it doesn't change anything excuse else. Excuse me. Excuse me. How do I? Look, assuming that I don't point in. How do I change the size of the unit between bottom of stack and where blue is pointing without completely rebuilding the stack? I could change the amount of allocated data is used by IOEM there, but I can't change the actual length of the IOEM data. Yeah, it, has to ha it has all, to be pre-allocated. All I say is that if you don't hard, in co hard uh, code the pointer to each block, then you can work, avoid that problem. Right. So, so I think, I think we understand what what forwarding plain hardware can do, right? And um, if if you want to have a sequence of ancillary data blocks, each of which can change its size, uh, you know, hop by hop, then you ultimately end up with having to build a parsing chain uh, that needs to be sequential for this n number well, of blocks that you need. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, there there is a certain there. Well, let me just quickly finish, right? So there, there is a cost, wrong, and, right. and that cost has, in the past, been considered prohibitive. And the typical compromise. No, I always that... say is that I keep saying processing the data is expensive, but wait, 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 wait. excuse me, excuse me. Whoa, 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 whoa. The header is no I wasn't finished. Right. Can I say something? Can I say something? It's my presentation. Can I say yeah. something? Right? Look, if there is variable length data that can expand in the middle of a packet. You have to rewrite the whole of the front of the packet. Right. Now, A, that seems extremely unlikely. It seems that no one would want to do that. But if you did, then you'd have to do it knowing how you were changing the stack itself and change the pointers accordingly. But I cannot believe that anyone is going to take the uh, take a block of data in the middle of this packet and stretch it by moving the by rebuilding the whole of the header in front of it. So I was I was trying to say that you know the the best compromise if somebody really feels a dire need to do that and I'm not quite sure about the desire in IOM to do that but um, the past analysis of this has been done that this would be the last block of ancillary data right so you can make an exception for that when you can deal with that but you know I don't think that any of the alternatives would result in you know um, faster and better parsing. Um, mm -hmm. than what we're doing here, 
right? So, but yeah, it's it's a longer discussion. Maybe one other point is also actually, um, <clears throat> even if you could do this, you could also since since basically the pointers are defined by the offset. Well, you could then you would then really need to have a rule that finds if you're adding IOM data and so forth, put it at the bottom, but yeah. not not at the top. Then the, then the offsets don't change. Your Correct. Your arithmetic That's, remains the same. Um, it's, you can, yeah. IOM is just one example. It will change size. Okay, you cannot uh, assume there's only one block will change its size. That's first. Second, may, maybe on the path we will well, need well, well, to well, add me, a new. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I finish I, my uh, two points? Can, can I? Can I, can, I address, can I address the first point and then I'll address the second point? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. So if you are going to insert something in here, which is a horrible thing to do, but if you are going to you know where you are pointing to and you can correct the pointers as you rebuild the front of the packet yeah you can okay. rebuild the pointer that's a my point is it's a no, you, you, the extra work right you need to recalculate the offset then you need to scan the entire uh label stack to fix all the pointers so that's a yeah, yeah but i mean you, but you have to you scan the entire label stack uh, I'm still but, waiting for anyone to give me a viable case for for putting data in the middle of the stack to start with. And even in this case, uh, how you this would be only the case if you can if you say you can really insert it in arbitrary position. Uh, if you could uh, insert, but they, for the IOM, I think that is that is a valid use case where you want to add stuff. Okay, fine, add it, but then basically put it at the, at, at the bottom. I think that is that that is a very fair. A uh, restriction or convention that you could make that would and that's exactly what I said, right? And I, it's 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 always look if you if, if you have a sequence of ancillary data whose length you don't uh, can 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 know upfront, right? You you have a sequential parsing, right? Whereas if you have a certain you know maximum number of sequence of pointers, you can process in parallel, right? So the number of uh, uh, steps you need to take in the parsing is is just optimized this way. I have to weigh one versus the other. That's also the case. Yes, in this particular case here, I could I could do red and blue uh, or brown and blue concurrently in my processor. Yeah, and if if the the SPLs differentiate, for example, by the type of the SPL, what function it goes to, you can pass in parallel the different blocks of ancillary data at the same point in time into different functional units in one step. Yeah, that's correct. Right, so I mean, those, those are uh, look. We 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 we've been around the block with sequence of IPv6 extension headers and the difficulty in parsing them, and that's exactly what you get when you have a chain of uh, extension headers. And we know how little of that has mated in hardware through all the different IPv6 platforms. That, right, that's a, that difficulty comes from the difficulty to process a header, not from parsing the header. That's a big difference. No, no, I mean, I, I, any, I'm sorry, but my experience with actual hardware has been that, that because, we got pushback no, on the actual parsing complexity. No, 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 because uh, parsing is easy. I, I insist that because I, I know how it is implement, implemented in ASIC, right? Then, you, you know, well, the, the true difficulty is because, uh, you know, some, head, some, some uh, structure of the extension header they also support multiple uh, ELV options. This doesn't make a hierarchical architecture. Also, some processing could be very slow, not supported by the- oh, I, think you, I, think, I, think how you, I think how you, you're gonna have to either point us to a paper or write something down. Uh, well, this is a session. Let's point us to a paper or write it down and show us why. If if we can add it to the either to the wiki or the questions document yeah. that um, uh, that uh, Loa is driving, that would be also great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a useful discussion, I think. Uh, you know uh, about the cost of parsing versus processing. You know, parsing you just uh, read the current location plus the offsite to to get the next header. That's as easy as that. No matter how you organize your header, right? But you do need to know. But you do need to know which elements that you need to process on this hop. Right. That's a. That's a. You can configure that. Right. You know. You have a multiple headers. Then so, you you design decide which header you will process. How do you but know you which might... one you're going to process? Supposing I've got two lots of IOAM in there. How do I know whether I'm doing IOAM one or two at this hop? 
you configure the hop to do the IOM, then it will do it. No, 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 Otherwise, no. It's got to do the IOEM on this. It's got to do the particular IOEM needed on this particular packet, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Uh, that, then you can filter the. Uh, that, that, that's that's decided by the ACL, right? You you. Uh, filter uh, uh, right, right. So you're saying you're saying you're going to use ACLs to do this. That's certainly a way of doing it, but that's not the way that people are currently trying to design um, packets Hello? in order to support applications. Yeah, I lost a signal. Stewart, I have a question to you before we... Uh, yeah. uh, so the offset uh, a unit in your uh, proposal, yes, the yes. pointer offset, yes, it's yes. in octets. That's what you were proposing, right? Oh, in so I, I actually, if you, the, the I wasn't sure whether it needed to be octets or words or long words, and that's a, dis that's a design decision, it's right? Um, and the 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 reason why you might prefer um, uh, long words is mm. that clearly you can go as far back in you can go two fifty six long words into the packet that's more than you'll ever okay. need. But the cost of that is that you have to put padding inside auxiliary data units, so you mm. have to pad them out to uh, a unit number of long words. I see, and then you you have multiple options with flag with a flag, right? Well, I, I, I have, that's what I've got in here. This is only the sort of sketch for discussing with, with my peers, as it were, about how we might do this. So um, um, I'm happy with whichever makes sense after we um, analyze the, the, the issues a bit more. So this is just a zero, zero draft. It's a, it's a sketch. And um, clearly, you still hear me? Yeah, um, um, I, my question was, uh, do you think if we make the offset uh, in, in sorry, the question is, if we made the offset uh, in ancillary data, uh, um, uh, what did we call it, header? Oh, if you have yeah. multiple ancillary data headers, yeah. so ancillary data header two would be, you know, the second ancillary data, yeah. and three would be the third. Ah, um, oh, so but we don't then, know how long. We don't know how long the ancillary, you could do that, but we don't know how long the ancillary data is. We don't? And we don't, well, no. I because... think we will have a header for it, like at the, you know, the, a header with, let's say, the, the length, right? It's a well, length well, value. Yeah, but hang, hang on. So supposing I've got the first item of ancillary data is. One. It, right. it, well, so supposing the first item of ancillary data is, is 20 bytes long, and the next one is 30 bytes long. Correct. Until I've looked at the 30 byte one and understood the 30 byte one, I don't know where to find the second item. But at so the beginning to... of ancillary data one, you will have a length and a you know, right. and then so, I have to walk, so I have to walk the chain to find it, even though I'm actually only interested potentially in the third item, for example. Right. I mean, you know the beginning, which is after the bottom stack. So then you can read you know, the length of the data right. one. And yep. then the length of data to a length of the so you're not actually parsing that, but just uh, offsetting yourself. Well, you, you do have to read the first one, find out how long it is, read the second one, find out how long it no. is, and now so you know. That, 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 that is my point. That's a cost that is exactly the same. You no, no, no. What you're same. saying is it's that not the, the, same as this. the throughput is the same. If you can, be, if you have seven ancillary data, you need to have a seven-stage pipeline to 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 find each uh, ancillary data starting point when you do the sequential chaining of of length. Whereas this would take you straight there. Mm. But you you okay. you are imagining some uh, some device that doesn't exist today, right? For for all the devices today, uh, all I say is that that cost is exactly the same, right? You, what, you, wait, wait a second. The you, cost you, of a you, pipeline. Yeah. For okay. So if you if you have a stage of 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 uh, of seven, you need to build a seven deep pipeline uh, for for parsing these things and keeping in parallel seven no, packets that, in in you, in, you, in partial processing. That pipeline is not the processing pipeline. I that think how parsing you... is uh, just one step. You plus the offset and get the next location. It doesn't matter. You use a pointer or use a chain. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Because you just to, uh, I have to find do a new I have to location do. in the packet. You don't process it now. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, I still have. I to think do, you I should... you you assume the pipeline is passive. That's for the. That is the processing pipeline. That is totally different from the parser. 
I, I, I think understand you should, I think you're going to you're talking about a parsing pipeline, but still it is a pipeline and you need to basically keep for for a depth of n same you if you write a write well, well, a parser well, well, okay. now um, you will find it's the same it doesn't change, uh, right. save you I, anything I, 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 I would like to see your parser written down so that i can understand what you are talking about and others can analyze whether you are correct or not all right yeah, so you I, need I will, to, you need to write time, a draft I, I will try to use a p4 to show you write a program to see well, well, well hang on a second p4 p4 may not be the only way of building this but that's a way to and describe I think we, it no 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 uh, I, every I, I, asic you, you, follow you that as I understand it, you, there's a different version of P4. You need to describe pointer uh, methods properly. Uh, P4 live, is it? P4 can't do with pointers very well, but P4 live does a better job. So I'm not even convinced, and, and we certainly should not limit our thinking to the thinking of what the P4 designers had in mind. Because we're designing for the we're designing for the general case. Pointer is there is a lot and there's lots of there's lots of parsers that don't use P4 that are in the wild. And P4, I think the, the more the more fundamental problem is that P4 as a programming language doesn't tell you whether or not uh, there is a cost. So I mean, people have you know used P4 to describe things and then measured performance. Right. And the performance, depending on what your parsing program was, was uh, vastly different, right? Because the underlying hardware that this is compiled into can be vastly different. Right. And, and just 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 because you're saying I can show to do this in P4 doesn't give you any uh, knowledge about the performance of it. I, I would bet that there aren't many, if any, high end production routers that are that are done in p4 does, does anyone know if there are i mean cisco i don't think uses p4 i doubt that juniper does does anyone else uh stuart it would a little bit depend what you call production if you're talking about academic production yes if we are talking okay. about uh, say uh large scale commercial deployments then no and it's not evident that there will be any in the foreseeable future right all, and of, I... all of cisco's current brand new product which is seeing a fair amount of uptake is based on p4 look for silicon one uh, so the uptake will be to be seen in the market and the market will eventually show that if we are talking about what is deployed and operated right now, P4 is mostly an academic experiment, Correct. experiment but that's it. But we can't design this around, well, we could, I suppose, design this around one implementation architecture, but that doesn't seem to be the, the, the smartest thing to do. And, and never done that it doesn't I say agree. anything. I mean, it's a great thing that more and more platforms are providing P4 support. But again, that doesn't say anything about the efficiency with which different P4 programs can be mapped to an actual forwarding ASIC. I, I agree with yeah, you completely, yeah, Taurus. I, I just wanted to correct. P4 doesn't provide you any implementation. That is just a description. But the description is a generic for any implementation. It's just a scribe of finite state machine to scan through the header. So the basic operation of it is to find the current location plus offset to find the next location. And but it's no a suboptimal architecture yes, you use. You can note, um, you know, a, a wide that kind of operation. So in that sense, it is basically the cost for passing the header. If either you have a single chain or you have a you know, just a stack all the pointers. It's just a, you put the information. And in I've basically location. seen a couple of but these performance things the where cost. change of protocol headers, uh, you know, through P4 were analyzed. And then basically the longer the chain was, uh, the, the, the lower the throughput on especially high-end ASICs. And obviously high-end ASIC for P4 typically means data center ASIC, so not typical WAN routers. No, 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 no. With, that, that, you know. that's, that's not true. For NP, that might be true because uh, you will uh, add more cycles to process a header. But for ASIC, there's no no um, any effect to the throughput, it, it, as long as uh, the header is within the processing scope. Uh, uh, that's, that's on the, 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 the research papers. We are getting to the chair speak. 
Let yeah, yeah. Speak. Thank you so much. Thanks. We are getting closer to the end of our meeting. Uh, a lot of time. Uh, I want to make sure that we are capturing all action items for the next meeting. And I want to tell by you that uh, we could not give you the floor uh, this time. So maybe we'll move your uh, request the next week. Uh, okay. But for the action items, I do want to assign you an action item. You know, to you know, you've already flagged that. Uh, there are some, uh, um, you know, P4 implications uh, for the parsing. Um, maybe if you can talk about it next time or document it on our wiki. Uh, can I give you this action item? Are you okay to take it? Yeah, I'm going to try to find some more information about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, other action items uh, we have. Um, we have to define the, uh, you know, what. Uh, data we want to carry within the la MPLS label stack and what data do we want to ca carry after the bottom of the stack and what segments should the data be applicable to. So that's an action item to, um, you know, all of us, uh, please contribute to it, uh, either on the wiki or um, we have a, we have a, the, the, the email, uh, le, the email mail list and uh, we have a document that low is driving, we can contribute to as well. I think the, the, the main question really is there, there are a lot of different alternatives and what are the criteria by, by which we're trying to, you know, decide which, which options to prefer for what reason, right? I think we, we talked a lot about performance um, and if so, you know, how do we make judgments about that? But maybe there are other criteria as well. So I think that's the big open question that Loa tried to start in, in his document and I think any help on, you know, those criteria would be very helpful for the process. So, Torles, do you agree that we need to define what we want to carry and then we see what are the alternatives to carry it, right? And I think all the things we're talking about is pretty much how we encode yeah. it, right? Yeah, how, the how. But before how, we need to, to define the what, right? I mean, I, I agree with I mean, you. More, more use case yeah, examples yeah. of different headers and when and how they need to be processed. No, 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 no. So first off, we need to go back and decide what we're going to do. Then we need to look at how we would package those in terms of uh, in the stack or below the stack. And then we need to figure out what the optimum design is. And when we figure out the optimum design, we need to be absolutely sure that it's a design that means we are unlikely to have to revisit this decision for, say, 20 years, which is how long we've had MPLS so far. Okay, I don't understand the how, but the the what I'm 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 not quite clear if it's not example use cases with um, okay here are three different uh, type of functions and they need to be processed on these steps that would be what I could understand as the what if that's not yeah. the what then I need a better explanation no, no, of the it, what. It's similar to what you're thinking, Torles. So the what should be driven by a use case. I agree. Okay. 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 okay so I don't think I have other. Uh, I will send an email about the timing. Uh, that's an action item on me. And uh, um, anything else I did not capture? And I right. think we are so, over time. So I do have a question from the Cisco person. What's that architecture I need to look up? Uh, overall, it's called Silicon One. That's a marketing name. It's called what? Silicon what? Yes. So I, I missed it. Silicon One. One. Oh, One. Okay. okay. It's a marketing name. All right. Okay. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Uh...